I remember when I started looking for my first house in Portland, Oregon, I really had no idea what to expect when it came to home prices. And for people who are moving from out of state, it can be an even bigger question mark. So whether you're moving from a market that is way more expensive than Portland, or you're moving from a market that is a lot more affordable than Portland, Oregon. In this video, we're gonna talk about the different sections of the Portland metro area, what you can expect to get in terms of home prices for three bedrooms, four bedrooms, five bedrooms, condos, and attached housing. And all that starts now. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from Portland, Oregon. And if this is your first time to the channel living in Oregon and you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. We've helped so many people relocate to Oregon and move to the Portland metro area. And as real estate professionals, we love to help with that process. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. Us. Either way, we would love to help with your move to the Portland area. Okay, so whether you're watching this video now at the end of 2022 or you're watching this video in 2030, I want to talk about different areas of the Portland metro area in the context of what you can get for your dollar and look at home prices in these different, different areas so you can get an expectation of what you can get for your dollar, not just now, but potentially in the future. Because when you look at how this breaks out, there's going to be areas that are more affordable. There's going to be areas that are much more expensive than others. So going into the process of relocating to the Portland metro area or buying your first home or even selling a home in the Portland metro area, you want to get a good understanding of what areas might fit you best when it relates to your budget specifically. So budget is typically number one on people's lists, right? And whether you're shopping home price and you're coming in with more cash or really you're shopping more that monthly payment on the financing side, either way, it's going to save you a lot of time and energy when you can start honing in on specific areas, not just that fit your lifestyle, fit your needs, your wants, your desires, your must-haves, all of that good stuff, but also that fit your budget. So the Portland metro area is a pretty big sprawling area with the Portland city center and Portland proper, Portland city limits sitting right in the middle of the metro area. All around Portland, you have suburbs and small towns that some are in closer proximity to Portland, some are a little bit further out. And you're going to see a lot of variation when it comes to home prices. So I'm gonna throw a lot of numbers at you. We're gonna look at how things break out when it comes to median sale price in different parts of the Portland metro area. I'll talk a little bit about some of these areas and if these are areas that you're interested in, if you wanna get more information, I'll put links to our vlog videos um, and other videos about these different areas of the Portland metro area as we move along. And of course, the best thing you can do is leave a comment below or just get in touch with us. We can have a conversation about some of the different areas that you might be interested in and learn more about the housing market there, learn more about the lifestyle, what it's like actually living in these areas, because that's what we want to help people with is not just get an idea of, okay, what is it going to look like to buy a house in this area? What are the prices look like, but what is it actually gonna be like to live there? And the best next step to get that information is to get in touch with us, of course. So, okay, starting out, we're going to talk about Portland proper. So Portland is separated primarily into four different quadrants. You have Northwest Portland, Southwest Portland, Southeast Portland, and Northeast Portland. You also have North Portland and South Portland. So these are all these directional addresses, but the primary chunks of area are these four directional quadrants. And in Portland proper primarily, you can get some urban living, you can get some suburban living, and you can also get some urban residential mix. A lot of Southeast Portland and Northeast Portland feels like you're in the city, it's a little bit more bustling, but these are areas that are really primarily residential. So right now in Portland proper, in these quadrants and North Portland and South Portland, you're looking at the median sale price for a three bedroom home is $545,000. You're looking at a median sale price for a four bedroom home of $730,000. Median sale price for a five bedroom home is $925,000. 
The median sale price for a condo is $350,000 and the median sale price for an attached dwelling is $500,000. And so I won't uh, go through and explain this every time, but the difference between condo and attached condo is more generally going to be like an apartment style condo. Uh, an attached home could have an HOA, it could be classified as a condo, but it's more like a town home or a row house. These are homes that are attached, but maybe are a little bit bigger on average, for example. Okay, moving into the west side of the Portland metro area, this is going to be Beaverton, Aloha, Hillsboro, and Northwest Washington County. Uh, Northwest Washington County uh, does border Portland just like Beaverton does, but you're going to get uh, some unincorporated areas, some Portland addresses, but a lot of Beaverton addresses, some Hillsborough addresses as well, and this is primarily Beaverton School District. So this is where you really start to break out into the suburbs on the west side. Very desirable, very sought after areas by many measures. Again, Beaverton, Aloha, Hillsborough, and Northwest Washington County. The median sale price for a three bedroom home is $540,000. The median sale price for a four bedroom home is $660,000. The median sale price for a five bedroom home is $790,000. The median sale price for a condo is $328,000. And the median sale price for an attached dwelling is $436,000. So we're seeing anywhere from around five to 10% less than Portland proper when it comes to home prices on this west side of the Portland metro area. The west side of the Portland metro area has really quick, easy access into downtown Portland. Although when you get out as far as Hillsboro, you're quite a bit further. There is a direct shot on Highway 26. So these are areas that people like to live in if they wanna be able to access Portland, but they wanna be in a little bit more of a suburban area. Moving on to the southwest metro area, this is going to be Tigard, Tualatin, Sherwood, and Wilsonville. So you, you get a little bit west, you're west of the river, uh, but you get further south as well. Highway 99 is really the primary corridor. Aside from when you look at Wilsonville, which is a little bit closer to uh, being right on I-5, all the way to the south of the Portland metro area, you're looking at the median sale price for a three bedroom home being $575,000. The median sale price for a four bedroom home $695,000. Median sale price for a five bedroom home, $820,000. Median sale price for a condo, $330,000. And the median sale price for an attached dwelling is $440,000. So when you look at the Southwest Metro area, you're looking at a, being a little bit more expensive than this West side of the Metro area, the Beavertons and the Hillsboroughs. Uh, I think primarily because in this Southwest corridor, again, Tigard, but Tualatin, Sherwood, as well as Wilsonville, you're looking at a much higher volume of newer homes not only new construction, but a higher volume of homes that were even just built in the last 25 or 30 years. And I think newer homes tend to be very desirable. So you're looking at kind of a true suburban feel by, by a lot of measures. You're looking at maybe better planned communities with parks in the middle and walking trails and sidewalks and things like that. When you look at a lot of Beaverton, uh, even extending out to Hillsboro to some degree, you're looking at homes that are a little bit older, uh, mid-century, even a little bit older than that. But but this Southwest corridor is going to be a little bit newer. I think that's reflected in the home prices. So it's a little bit you know, cleaner, it can be less dense. Again, it has a little bit more of that suburban feel, so it's a little more laid back, a little quieter. Again, maybe a little bit safer even. And so I think that's reflected in the home prices in this area. Although in many parts of Tigard, you're probably going to get more consistency with Beaverton. Tigard borders Beaverton, so on, on the north side of Tigard, you can hit a little bit of uh, Portland city limits, but you can also hit Beaverton. As you get further south in Tigard, you get a little bit newer, a little bit more suburban, in particular when you look at areas like Bull Mountain, for example. Okay, now we'll talk about the southeast side of the metro area. So this is going to be Milwaukee, Happy Valley, Oregon City, and Gladstone. The median sale price for a three bedroom home, $550,000. The median sale price for a four bedroom home, $640,000. Median sale price for a five bedroom home, $740,000. Median sale price for a condo, $310,000. The median sale price for an attached dwelling, $455,000. So you're looking at across the board, a little bit more affordable than that Southwest 
part of the Portland metro area, the Tigard, Tualatin, Sherwood, Wilsonville's. Uh, if you're looking at being pretty on par with Beaverton, Aloha, Hillsboro, these areas, um, just a little bit more expensive uh, than that west side of the metro area. Uh, the southeast section of the Portland metro area, you're gonna get a lot of diversity. So you get Milwaukee, which really in a lot of ways is a lot like southeast Portland. It borders southeast Portland. Southeast Portland is just to the north, so just to the south of the Southeast Portland Quadrant, you have Milwaukee. So it has a little bit more of an urban feel. It's older, you get a lot of bungalows, things like that. But then you get into Gladstone, into Oregon City, and then especially to Happy Valley, um, a little bit further to the east, and you're going to get a lot of new construction, a lot of areas that have been developed over the last 10, 15, 20, 25 years. And again, when you're looking at what people's preferences are, more often than not, they're looking for larger homes and they're looking for homes that are, that are going to be a little bit newer. So less deferred maintenance, less issues, less of a need to come in and remodel, less of a need to come in and you know fix up a lot of things, for example. So when you look at the Southeast section of the metro area, again, you get a lot of diversity. You have some very true suburban, suburbia type areas again, especially when you look at like Happy Valley, but Oregon City to some degree, but the further you go east, the further you go south, you start to get pretty rural as well. So especially when you look at communities like Oregon City, it has a little bit more of kind of a country, small town, rural feel to some degree, especially when you start bordering up against the urban growth boundary, again, on the east and the south side. Okay, next we'll talk about an area that is a little bit smaller, but has to probably be talked about as its own standalone sliver of the Portland metro area and that's going to be the south section of the metro area Lake Oswego West Lynn into the Stafford area you get a little bit of Wilsonville in there as well on the east side of I-5 um, too so if you get all the way south you you know you start to get into Wilsonville a little bit but really Lake Oswego West Lynn and then also Stafford Stafford is a really rural area you have a lot of big luxury homes a lot of these homes have 5 10 15 20 acres is one of the more expensive areas in the portland metro area so when you're looking at the south section of the metro area you're looking at the median sale price for a three bedroom home being seven hundred and ten thousand dollars the median sale price for a four bedroom home nine hundred and twenty two thousand dollars the median sale price for a five bedroom home 1.1 million Median sale price for a condo though, $350,000, that's pretty on par with these other areas that we've talked about. But the median sale price for an attached dwelling, like a townhouse for example, $590,000. So that's going to be notably more expensive as well. So this is an area, especially when you look at Lake Oswego into West Lynn, where you have larger homes, more luxury real estate on average, more desirable, probably the highest concentration of wealth in the Portland metro area is going to be in Lake Oswego and West Lynn and then down into Stafford. Uh, and the home prices reflect that. So not only what you can get, but the community itself really caters to people who are looking for a little bit more luxury style living. Okay, next we'll talk about the far east side of the Portland metro area. So it is interesting, when you when you look at the metro area, we talked about the west sides. So it's right about 70 or 80 blocks west is when you start getting into Beaverton and into Tigard to some degree on the west side. So Portland proper, Portland city limits, doesn't extend as far west as it does east. So again, about 70, 80 blocks on the west side. It's not until you get to about 150, 160 blocks on the east side until you get out of the Portland city limits and then you get into Gresham. So you get into Gresham, Troutdale, even Damascus, which is a smaller town, a little bit more rural. But if you look on a map, it does kind of line up parallel you know, with this far east metro area corridor. And when you're looking at the east side, the far east side of the metro area, you're looking at a median sale price for a three bedroom home of $450,000, median sale price for a four bedroom home, $535,000. Interestingly enough, the median sale price for a five bedroom home is also $535,000. Median sale price for a condo is $250,000. Median sale price for an attached dwelling is $390,000. So notably less expensive and the least expensive area in the Portland metro area is this far east side, primarily made up of Gresham, 
Gresham itself is about 25 square miles, but also Troutdale up to the north, which is on the Columbia River. Damascus to the south, which is a smaller town, Again, a little bit more rural living. I think you're actually gonna be outside of the urban growth boundary. But these are areas where your dollar can go further than anywhere else in the Portland metro area. But again, all else held equal, it's so much further on the east side than you are on the west side to the city. And I think a lot of people do, when they move to the Portland metro area, wanna be able to have access to Portland. They wanna be able to get into the city. They wanna be able to get to the restaurants, get to the sporting events go out and hit the town every once in a while. And so if you're on the west side, you know, especially in Beaverton, uh, Tigard to some degree, you're gonna be able to be in a suburban area but get into Portland relatively quickly. Of course, on the west side, again, when, when you get all the way out to Hillsborough, you're gonna be about as far on the west in Hillsborough as you are east in Gresham. So either way, you're looking at a starting point on the east side when you get out into these suburbs, Troutdale, Gresham in particular, where you're already 150 plus blocks from the city center. Okay, last but not least, we have to talk about the north side of the metro area, which is going to be Vancouver and Clark County. So this is a really big area. It also uh, encompasses uh, Camas as well, which is a really popular area. And these are areas that have been growing and developing like crazy over the last five to 10 years. Camas, and in particular, north of Vancouver into like Ridgefield, for example, um, you start to get pretty far from Portland the further you go north up into Ridgefield. But these are areas where People who are moving to the Portland metro area, uh, they might want to live in Vancouver to be further away. They might want to live in Vancouver or Clark County because it is a little bit more affordable. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, but also in Washington, there's no state income tax. So in Oregon, there's no sales tax. In Washington, there's no state income tax. It might be a purely financial decision in regards to taxes, uh, why people might live in Vancouver. Although if you work in Oregon, you're gonna be paying a state income tax. So everybody's circumstance is gonna be a little bit different, obviously, but definitely a consideration. So in Vancouver, Clark County, the median sale price for a three bedroom home, $477,000. The median sale price for a four bedroom home, $599,000. The median sale price for a five bedroom home, $789,000. The median sale price for a condo, $300,000. The median sale price for an attached home is $400,000. So across the board, notably less expensive than most of the Portland metro area, aside from when you look at the east side of the Portland metro area like Gresham Troutdale. So even if you're not evaluating this decision based on the income, the state income tax versus sales tax, or even your commute necessarily, if you're living in Vancouver or further north of Vancouver in Clark County, your commute's going to be really bad if you are commuting into Portland. It's notoriously the worst commute in the Portland metro area, driving south in the morning and driving north in the evening. So I think a lot of people do gravitate toward this area because you can get so much more for your money. Um, there are some really incredible neighborhoods, really desirable neighborhoods that check a lot of boxes for people. Again, the sacrifice is really gonna be your proximity and the commute. Um, some people can look past that, again, especially when you look at what you can get for your dollar in Clark County. So these numbers are a little bit broad too. Obviously, there's so much nuance and difference. You know, when you look at you know, just between three bedroom homes, four bedroom homes, five bedroom homes, you know, we're not evaluating through this metric, the age of the homes, the condition of the homes, for example, we're just looking at the median sale price for the amount of bedrooms that you can get, which is one of the primary things that people are looking for, right? So that does break it out a little bit more than just looking at the median sale price alone, because the median sale price in a lot of places is gonna be 550,000, 600,000, maybe 650,000. But when you start breaking it out, you can get a little bit clearer of a picture of what your dollar is actually going to get you. So in a lot of places, we're seeing the median sale price for a three bedroom home hover around that $500,000 mark, a little bit less, a little bit more in some places. And then in like Lake Oswego, West Lynn, over 700,000. So that is again, by far and away, the most expensive area of the Portland metro area. We're looking at four bedroom homes, somewhere around low sixes to low sevens. We're looking at five bedroom homes, anywhere from high sevens to low nines, generally, again, with the exception of Lake Oswego and West Lynn. Uh, condos, somewhere around 300, 
to $350,000, attached homes somewhere around $400,000 to $450,000. And so those are based on numbers today in the last three months, the end of 2022. But if again, if you're looking at this anytime in the future, you can probably just add 10%, 15%, whatever it is, depending on how long ago this video is made, and probably get the same distribution, the same breakout. Because the dynamics that are, you know, are attributed to home values in these different markets are not really going to go away. Again, your proximity, uh, how things are made up, that is starting to bring in a ton of great restaurants, breweries, a little bit of nightlife, activities, a lot of entertainment, which is going to make an area like Beaverton, you know, more and more desirable over the years, which is probably going to contribute to maybe a little bit higher home value growth than in other areas. So, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned a little bit. If this video was helpful, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. And if you are thinking about moving to the Portland metro area, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video. Schedule a Zoom call with us. We can talk about your budget, your timeline, what areas suit you best, and put together a game plan for you. And if you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. As always, we appreciate you watching, and until next time, we'll talk to you later.